I see he's fucking talk to you later, bro. No, don't stop for me. I already know everything. Floor's yours. What the fuck is she talking about? Bro, she figured it out on her own, okay? She's not gonna say shit. Are you fucking losing your mind, bro? This shit really got you bugging out. As soon as y'all break up, she's gonna run her fucking mouth. You think I'm a snitch? I think you're an addict and I can't fucking trust you, honestly. Don't call her that. Look what the fuck she got you doing. Bro, time and time again, you proved that you just not fucking built for I'm so fucking sick and tired of hearing that. Do you think about anybody else but yourself for once in your fucking life? And I double back to save your ass, and I lost my fucking family over it. And I can't even talk about it because it never trumps the latest Tariq crisis. Maybe this, maybe this right here is my fucking outlet. This is your fucking outlet, nigga. Learn how to take this shit on your chin like I do every day. I can't because I'm not you. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odi J and we are locked in. This is the last thoughts and an exclusive clip for episode five of Power Book 2 Ghost, the mid-season finale. Now, this exclusive clip that you just seen was between Tariq and Brayden, and we're seeing that L is really involved in what Brayden got going on as far as throwing the parties. And we know Brayden is at the party playing with his nose now. And Tariq, he's trying to get from up under the game and on top of the game. But it looks like Braden might be bringing them back. But before we jump into this and I give you my last thoughts for episode five, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions, then hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So I appreciate each and every one of you. We need a little under 800 right now. So hit that subscribe button and let's jump into it. This is my last thoughts for episode five, Ghost. So far, the parties have been jumping off. We know that Tariq is going to be talking to Anya at the end of the episode. So maybe the beginning of this, they're taking shots. But what we see is Brayden in the back with Elle. She's been performing. And this was always Brayden's idea when he first seen it. And he took that first hit of that booger sugar after the open mic. Now, Tariq is like, what the hell are you doing back here? And why does she know about all the information we got going on? Now, I know a lot of people were saying maybe she's feds. All we said once a junkie, never trust a junkie will always be a junkie. All of that coincides with each other. But Braden, he's sticking up for it. And we see a little bit of the Tommy Egan starting to show within Braden. Now, no one's for sure about Elle. I just think she's a college student. She does drugs and she was looking for a new supplier. Now, if she is the feds or undercover, then she'll probably get in trouble and a lot of this stuff wouldn't be admissible just because she's a junkie. But she has been getting close to Braden. And if you've seen the game that she was playing, she was trying to push Tariq out of the picture saying he will never know. Now, he would have never known if she wouldn't have said nothing while they were down here talking about, oh, you guys can continue to talk, which is one reason I know a lot of people say she's feds. We're not throwing that theory out. I'm just saying I think she's a junkie, just a college kid. But once she started speaking and Braden took up for her, this is when Tariq realized that Braden is in over his head. We finally get to see some emotion from Braden, and he's actually firing back at Tariq. He's not letting this just go down. You're not going to be saying, hey, you're a junkie. You needed to get it together. Because Braden really has sacrificed a lot for Tariq. He did take the stand. He covered for you so you wouldn't get kicked out. He got his parents to get you an internship, even though it was a Ponzi scheme. He didn't know nothing about it. But he lost his whole family dealing with Tariq. And for Tariq to be treating him this way, that's kind of bad, but I understand we're in a dope game. We don't have time to be making these small mistakes that Braden could be potentially making. So I'm guessing we're going to just have to see how this plays out because we know Tariq isn't going to turn his back on Braden. Now, this is the last season, so maybe someone will be unalived or someone's going to jail. But I definitely believe that Tariq is going to make it out of this. So what we're going to do now is just go into the last thoughts with the rest of the characters, Braden and Tariq. This is just another hiccup in their relationship, and they're going to have to talk that out. We know that they're not turning their back on each other. They're just going to have to either A, get Braden away from L, which will give us the answer to B also. Get off the drugs. We're going to get more information about the baby between Tariq and Diana. Now, there is that clip that I showed you guys where Tariq is out there talking to Diana, and she's talking about, do you want to come with me? And we also know in the trailer the season trailer, we hear Tariq talking about how James tried to keep him away from the dope game and all this nonsense. And here he is in the same position with a potential kid on the way. Now, Tariq and Diana, the relationship from what we've seen in the trailer, I don't think it's going to be on good terms for the simple fact Tariq is still upset that Diana basically got his mom set up to almost be on a lie by Tommy. But he wants to be there for the kid. So these two, they aren't going to connect as much as we would like them to see. Maybe in the second half of the season, but up to right now, it's going to be up to Monet to try to make sure that these two 
can at least be cordial. With the argument of Braden and Tariq over L knowing about this information, we know that Braden is going to be on the same tip, pause, that Tariq is when it comes to Anya. We're dealing with Noma. We're in a potential war. There's a truce. Tariq can't be messing with Anya. Yeah, I believe that there's going to be a play, but you have to think of it from Braden's perspective. You just yelled at me for being with L and doing drugs, but now you're with the person that we were working for, the person that has the power to put a hit on us, daughter, Noma's daughter, Anya. So it's going to be back and forth between these two. Of course, I said these two are going to have to work it out, but there isn't any time for them to go their own separate ways. They're just going to have to be mad at each other, but continue to work. Because if they're going to make money, these parties that Braden is throwing, he's going to have to continue to throw them, even if he's playing with his nose now. We've seen Monet make the decision to stick up for her kids. Now, she's going to have to push Tariq out of the picture. Even though Tariq is Diana's baby's father, it's still going to be a certain level of tension between the whole family because Tariq St. Patrick, once he came into the Tejada's life, when we first seen him, you can kind of pinpoint that as a moment where the Tejada started going downhill. Now, am I blaming it all on Tariq? No, but this is the first time we've seen him, and it all starts to make sense, and we all look at Tariq like, damn, going all the way back to when you were tutoring Zeke. So it looks like Monet's going to be going out with a bang literally this season. Now, I'm not sure if she's shooting at Detective Don Carter or this is some hitters trying to get at Drew and them when they're transporting stuff. But if you see Monet in a mink, just believe Monet in the mink got that pink pink. That's a silencer and she ain't playing around. I'm curious to see how this plays out with Davis in the fight club. He's getting his 20% from Tariq and Braden. But we also know that he's been trying to push up on Noma with the information he's provided. And we see Noma and Kane down in the fight club. Now, Kane is going to be fighting Zion. I don't know what they're fighting for. Maybe it's to clear up territory because Kane and Noma are getting pretty close. But I'm pretty sure Davis is going to have a hand in all of this. Rather, he's making a little bit of money on side bets on Zion. Or he's just trying to tell Noma, I got more information. And if you need it, I got it. So fuck with me. It's going to be up to Don Carter. He's going to probably make a big time bust this week. We've seen Drew outside of the van. I mentioned that we've seen Monet shooting at someone. So Detective Don Carter, he knows about the Tejadas. He knows about the connection with Tariq. He's just been piecing this thing together step by step with the help of Kamal. But you remember, it's his way or the highway. So the Tejadas, they're going to have to either play fair or get locked up. And I'm saying locked up. Because all arrows and fingers are pointing at Drew being the potential one to get in there and talk to Don Carter and give up all the information. Just because he wants to be set free and away from all of this. And we have to cut Drew some slack. We've seen how he was raised. He was the worst one out of all of them. So now, if he does turn on the family, you got to look at it like this. Kane been trying to get at him. Monet, she's trying to get at him. Diana, she had a change of heart. So, Drew, he's on his own. But we will see him moving some dope this week, and we're going to see how that plays out. Hopefully, he can make it out of here alive because I got a little bet with the Moets that he lives longer than Kane. But we'll see. I'm not condoning him snitching. I'm just saying, if he wants to get from up under all of this, that might be the only opportunity for him to stay alive <laughs> and stay away from the Tejadas. All right, there you go, the exclusive clip of Braden and Tariq. And we also got our last thoughts. Before the break, make sure you tune in tonight for Are We Ready, where we take all the information that we have, we piece it together and try to see how this episode five is going to drop. That will be at 3 p.m. Eastern tonight on Mode IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.